how to set up every car on every track in Assetto Corsa Competizione. In this video, this will be the third part of this video. Maybe there are gonna be more, I'm not sure yet. But over here, I will explain different ways to go about setups and what to change, but more importantly, when to change when you're going into trouble. So normally there's like a whole list of oh do this and then you get rid of understeer oh do that and you're gonna be rid of oversteer I'm, I'm really gonna explain on which scenario you need to change what and what i would do when something like that happens so i'm gonna ask a lot of questions and i'm gonna answer them with setup like solutions let's get into it so i'm building i'm using the ferrari in this uh example to get like to explain everything this track this car i think it's a pretty sweet combination so let's just load it up in the first and the second part we talked about the ride height we talked about bomb stop ranges and we talked about wheel rates and we also had a speak about this uh, preload differential and the anti-roll bar that's what we're gonna talk about right now the thing is with that front and rear anti-roll bar at the moment in this update is that uh, on the front we have stiff and on the rear it gets really loose the rear anti roll bar you could see it's all about the exit and the front anti roll bar it's all about the entry now if we have like uh this setup of this ferrari but uh let's just use this as an example let's say we have some understeer now if we take off that rear right height then on entry we may have some understeer now if we know that lower anti roll bar will like decrease understeer on entry then we can lower this and this will make the car turn in better but the problem with this anti roll bar on the front is it's kind of kind of a little bit of a run-up effect on your steering input so if we have a really high value then you get a really precise steering input but if you put this lower and i'm steering the chassis is gonna move then the fronts will start biting on the tarmac and we probably get into the situation that we have too much grip on the front creating a lot of oversteer and the reason in this current meta update exploity kind of a way is that we need to stiffen this up a lot so we don't get that effect but then this front anti-roll bar creates a lot of understeer that's why we're gonna push that back end of the car up now this is just a little bit this car doesn't really need that lot of a height right height difference but let's say the lamborghini or the mercedes or even the uh and the austin martin lexus oh my god it's all the way up here but this can only be when we have a really stiff front anti-roll bar so that's the reason why that one is so stiff okay so <clears throat> let's go back to this scenario now because we have that right height uh that rear anti-roll bar needs to like be really loose to get back to get that grip back on the rear and that's just fast right now at the moment but what if what if we had the situation that we have quite some right height and under braking we have the proper balance in the car and we have a lot of grip on the front but we're still finding some understeer when we go on throttle let's say it just wants to go in a straight line every time we go on throttle uh, let's say <clears throat> we are using this setup and we still have this like understeery effect in these corners then we can just increase this anti-roll bar now now it's getting stiffer which is basically doing is that the rear like the left uh mechanical grip and the right mechanical grip now will be more connected together so 
when we are on throttle or the car starts bouncing we just lose some contact patch on the back making it sliding making it to slide more easily but then again we're on throttle behavior and we want to have as much tire contact as possible if we push this all the way up then what's going to happen is this traction control is going to interfere on our exit because that like when the car is like leaning one way that left rear will let's say we go left corner that left rear will lose its contact patch and the ABA and, and the traction control will interfere that's why it's so low all the time and that's also this case with this current meta with the bump settings and rebound rebound means that this wheel just wants to go down as fast as possible and bump means that low bump setting will mean the tire will go up as easy as possible now if we have very high bump settings then this wheel will not allow to go so fast into its bump stop range this is about this the pace of it it's not like the stiffness you can do this zero or high this is about speed now i don't know if it's like two millimeters per nanosecond or two like this two and this is different for some cars i believe as well so you can also really use this to fine tune your setup what i used to like do with the porsche and also with this car sometimes to keep control of that front end when we're braking let's say we get into the situation that we're braking and we're oversteering on an initial point then high bump settings could really help us out because this makes the car pitch forward a little bit more slowly and this is also the case for the back end if we want let's say we want to stick to this like low anti-roll bar and we want to like create some rotation on the initial moment when we're hitting the throttle higher bump settings could help us out on the back so this means when we go on throttle and we have this quite low wheel rates this will this moment will be a little bit delayed before we hitting that bump stop rate on the back it will take a bit longer now the biggest issue that we have with these bumps this is going to affect the whole lap and if we look at the mechanical grip section this will not affect the whole lap this front end the brake bias the left front and the right front these changes will have a lot to do with the entry and the back will have a lot to do with the exit but the dampers if we increase some bump on the rear then somehow it's gonna have an effect when the car is bouncing it's just, this is constantly like more active but try this out you know you're not like this is not uh, locked for you you can use this this is just the best way I come up with to explaining this before we go any further i'll need to mention the sponsor of this video coach dave academy if you're not want to go into setup or it's just too much of a pain for you or you just don't understand it they have an awesome app that you can start up you just load up your car you just load up the menu and you will see all the setups you have a safe setup a quality setup and a race setup and all is taken care for you this is what I actually used like a year ago, two years ago. I was actually using this a lot. And the best point of this is just to save me so much time. Now, setups can be very like personal, but their subscription is absolutely cheap. You don't have to test setups or whatever. Just, just load them up and see how they fit you. Link down in the description. We need to speak about tow values and the camber as well. On this Ferrari, I'm having actually a lot less camber than I said in the previous videos. 
because this made my rear end of this Ferrari just more stable on throttle, under braking, and under like steering inputs overall. I was really happy with this uh, camber. And this is also for the tire wear. This, this car, I don't know if it's but the other cars as well, but this actually decreased the wear on the back. And it is a little bit slow, little bit slower than when we have uh, the full camber, but this made it more predictable. I'm actually a lot more confident in this kinds of a setup. Now the tow values, when it's in the negative, we get more responsiveness. And a lot of people say that this is overall faster, but I did some test runs tonight and I was pushing this on and the plus. And if you look at the textbook of tow values, this would give you more corner stability. I really find this core lacks a little bit of like corner stability. And this stability is about fast corners and mid speed corners, slow corners, it's maybe a little bit different. But just know that negative values give responsiveness and positive values give stability. I would not go ho higher than 0 0.2 minus or plus. On the back, again, negative will give responsiveness and like more playful rear end, but uh, positive will give more stability. Now the thing is with this uh, toe values, it's also affecting the whole lap, so every corner every part of the track this is gonna have an effect so if you're just like let's say you're still really happy with your car setup and you're just driving but you just lack that little bit of stability and let's say you're using these values try this and see if you gain some stability now quick side note the toe values are a bit broken in this game because so, like let's say you wanna wanna get into some top speed setup, you wanna get the maximum top speed setup and you're pushing this on zero zero zero. This will mean this wheels are completely aligned and straight. It doesn't matter if you put this on four and four and four, it will still do the same top speed, which is absolutely broken. If you do this in real life, you'll just smoke off the tires out of your car. The top line speed will suffer. You will have fuel usage issues. You will be just so slow and it will be uncontrollable car. But somehow in this current update, you don't have this uh, issue. So uh, I think the tow values, you can really change some behavior on a car with this. But I would not um, go extreme because then it's, it feels broken. So just like, what was it? Zero, minus 0 0.15 and uh, yeah, that's it. Now, there's another thing I want to get into with this setups, and it's about the top speed. Now, this is like the Nürburgring setup that I built for this Ferrari. Uh, we actually need a lot of this rear wing and we need a lot of like a little bit of that rake of the, in this car. But what if we want to change this into something that is at like a top speed? What I would do in this case is let's say for a lot of cars, this is just not an option. We need some pressure on that rear end. Let's say we're doing Monza or we're doing Paul Ricard. We need a little bit of that wing pressure on to keep that back end in check. So for this car, like Paul Ricard would be six, maybe Monza would be three or four. This is very, very car dependent. You're gonna have to test it out, but I would not go zero. This ride height is gonna disappear. We talked about this in the last video about setups made easy. Um, again, then we're gonna increase that brake bias as well because we are losing stability when we take that rear wing off, we lose stability on that rear axle. The pressure is going to be gone, especially under braking. Make no mistake, having a lot of rear wing 
will give you so much grip on that rear end we'll keep that so much in check we'll give you so much more right height on the rear we'll give you so much more brake bias we'll allow you to get more bump stop ranges uh and will allow you probably also to have lower wheel rates this is all beneficial in the corners so a lot of times i hear people say ah we need to take off the wing because we have some straights but you suffer a lot in the corners when you take off that wing and like let's say if you do this on 10 and you look at your top speed really is there a difference but you immediately start suffering in the corners so be careful what you wish for when you take off that wing now on paul ricotta monza obviously we need to take that off because we have a lot of straights but and also this car with like uh spa we could take off a little bit of wing but that will not be the case for all the cars the uh, bmw and the austin martin a lot of times i run that full wing all the time so yeah that's something that i still wanted to share now if you feel we have still the bump stop rates to explain i'm gonna go into that as well um just look at this rate as your last spring that's basically it you hit the bump stop range and then the rates is gonna be your new spring so very high rates will just uh like lose that grip initially very fast so i've never understood why we want to have high rates and like that's that's why i put them always at 25 percent and what can be really helpful if you are having like let's say you have some issues on entry and you're feeling like this front end is getting like uh, too much grippy when you're under braking you could hire these wheel rates but they there are other ways to do this so i would normally just do some 25 percent of the slider and i'm not touching them a whole lot i'm also thinking about this uh steer ratio i was not really uh knowledgeable of this but now i am a little bit high ratio just means that we need to use more input to rotate the car and this is actually beneficial uh in especially the fast corners and you will not have this initial biting moment like high rates will make it more forgiving when you're steering but the downside of this is you need to use more input to correct it when you get into like an oversteer situation now i could go on for another 45 minutes going into setups and this was just a ferrari example and i'm already seeing the comments come in that maybe some people like really fast knowledgeable people don't agree with me or maybe you do agree and you have some comments let me know as well in the comments because uh, people all start reading that as well and maybe there's like additional info the last two videos i actually learned a lot from there's a lot of people making these comments they really help me as well and as i am explaining this and i'm looking at this like a few weeks later i'm like hmm i could have explained this even better the next time so let me know uh let's hit a thousand likes and we make like a new part of this maybe we take a new car let's see how that goes in the meanwhile if you're really struggling on curbs and you want to finally have a solution for this watch this video next